Now, as we've been reporting, China's Premier Wen Jiabao has outlined plans to contain inflation and generate long-term economic growth. Speaking at the World Economic Forum in Dalian, Premier Wen said China's slowing economic growth is merely a result of the government's attempts to rein in inflation. He added that China is willing to increase its investment in Europe, but stipulated the eurozone needs to get a handle on its debt crisis. In Europe, Greece has resumed talks with European lenders for more financial aid, and the Italian government has been debating an initial vote vote for its much revised 54 billion euro austerity package. For more on the implications of China's interest in Europe and the growing Eurozone debt crisis, I'm joined now in the studio by a research fellow with the Centre for Independent Studies, Dr Oliver Hartwich. Oliver Hartwich, thanks for joining us. How much faith should we have that China's shoulders are big enough to fix a problem that governments in Europe have not been able to deal with so far? Well, China certainly has broad shoulders, but um, they may not be big enough for Europe because you just have to get the um, figures into proportion. When we're talking about a country like Italy, for example, Italy needs to refinance about half a trillion euros in the next two years. That's perhaps even too much for China to bear. What would China be looking for? I mean, this is not uh, a, a, a purely an expression of goodwill. What would they be looking for in return for investing in Europe at such a difficult time? Well, the Chinese have already outlined uh, their demands from Europe. What China would like to see is a changed European policy when it comes to WTO negotiations. China would like to get to preferred access, of course, to European markets. China would probably also like to see a different European stance on the weapons embargo. So there are clear Chinese demands. Um, but unfortunately, I think even if all these demands are met, China will not be able to stem the euro crisis. How much of a game changer is this Italian austerity? package. <laughs> well, if we only knew what the Italians were really up to, because Berlusconi seems to change his mind now every second day. Uh, they were going to have a special tax on rich Italians, and then he was backtracking from that, then he was back on the table. So with Berlusconi, you never quite know where you are. It really does reflect the difficulty in the region, doesn't it, of sort of striking that balance between the cuts that are needed and also keeping people happy and not revolting on the streets. Yes, because that's what we're seeing, of course, in Greece. I mean, Greece has been going through this very difficult, painful process for the last, well, almost two years now. And look where they are. The figures are actually worse uh, than it originally predicted. And uh, Greece is by no means certain to come out of this process successful. I think there is no chance, as was originally planned, to bring Greece back to capital to markets within the next three years. Now, talk us through the difference in this crisis between Italy, Greece, Portugal, Spain, um, Ireland, in the difference of how this crisis plays out. I know for certain one thing is that Italy is just far too big to bail out. Yeah, I think that's one of the big differences, actually, because a country like Greece, of course, you can save a country like Greece if there is enough political will in the core countries in Germany, in France, in the Netherlands. Of course, they could uh, pay for Greece and keep it artificially alive. With a country the size of Italy, that's simply not possible because Italy is far too big, even for the big economies of Europe, for France and Germany, to bear. So that's one difference. The other difference is, of course, that Greece is in a far, far worse state than Italy. You just have to look at uh, Greek government bonds and the yields on Greek government bonds, and they have now uh, topped more than 100%. So that's not possible. For Italy, we're still talking about an economy that just yesterday had a debt auction and had to pay a yield of 5.6% for its one-year debt. So that's OK. It's not too bad. It's actually what New South Wales currently pays. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of, in terms of uh, Greece, where does it go from here? Because we've already seen the effects being had on French banks, which is, you know, so the Greek crisis is far more interwoven with the rest of Europe. It's really difficult to say where Greece is going, but I think um, there is only one uh, long-term solution for Greece, and that is it has to leave the Eurozone. There's no way you can uh, reform the Greek economy within the framework of the Euro. That really was inconceivable even just a few weeks ago. People were saying, no, 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 that wouldn't happen. And certainly Nicolas Sarkozy and Angela Merkel are saying right now, that will never happen. But Angela Merkel doesn't even seem to have a, a majority in her own party or in, in her own coalition. We have seen it uh, just a few days ago that her vice chancellor uh, from the FDP, Philipp Rösler, talked about a Greek default in a uh, norpet for a conservative newspaper in Germany. So it seems that, uh, that the consensus on saving Greece at all costs is fracturing in Germany. Um, what options does China have? I mean, Premier Wen wasn't specific on exactly what steps they would take to help Europe. What options does he have before? Him. 
Well, interestingly, um, Premier Vernon really sounds very much like Angela Merkel in these questions because he's asking austerity from the Europeans. He's asking the Europeans to get their house in order before the Chinese would actually consider really investing more money into Europe. And that's quite wise, actually, if you take the Chinese experience they've had with Portugal. Remember, last year the Chinese went into the Portuguese debt market before the Portuguese bailout. And they had, uh, of course, incurred heavy losses afterwards because uh, now they had to write down some of their Portuguese investment. I think with the uh, Chinese investment in Spain, we're looking at a similar issue, and they would like to um, avoid a repeat of that experience. A lot of doomsayers are now saying that this is the end of the Eurozone. Do you agree? I agree. Um, I think it is uh, quite likely that we will still see some kind of rump euro eventually. Um, but I think in its current form and with its current membership, the euro has no future because a country like Greece has to leave in order to survive. All right, Oliver Hartwich from the Centre of Independent Studies, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.